hint and knowledge that these exist somewhere in a memory somewhere. And then I, when somebody approaches me to work with them on something, I go, who is this choir? What do, what do they want or what do they need? Um, and then I sort of fit the bill for what they're asking for, only in hopefully surprising ways, ways that they might not be expecting. And in this case, it was just for a high school honor choir in Minnesota, the stars stand up in the air. Um, and they had a really open slate, they had an open book of what they wanted, they just wanted something good. And um, I don't know, I don't know how my heart or anybody's heart is moved by particular texts or particular musics, but in my case, this one and Afternoon on a Hill just seem to have music in the words, I guess. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of poetry out there that is amazing poetry, but doesn't have music in it somehow. You know, the, the words don't sound like they'd be set to music right. You know, that they just wouldn't make any sense to set them to music. That being said, Star Sun Deeper, Afternoon and Hill, they are works of art that don't necessarily need music necessary. So I guess my process is just inundating myself with poetry and then knowing where to look when the time is right to set a poem. And then it doesn't take me long to figure out if that piece of text is appropriate for me to set to music. Great. Um, Michael. Well, hello. Um, I was wondering, I was wondering, like, while you were writing this piece, uh, on a Hill, like, what images and what you were thinking, like, as you were thinking, like, like, what's the story or the imagery that you were thinking of while composing the piece? I guess more than anything, I was, okay, this was in 2007. And I was still living in southern Minnesota. It was the last time, of, last year I was there. So there are some imagery, pastoral imagery, imagery of hills and clouds. And I remember as a kid lying outside and just in the grass and looking at the clouds. And I hope that you've all done that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I think everybody at some point is just maybe not trying to find shapes, just looking at how beautiful the different possibilities are. So there are those kind of images, but I think the most poignant image to me was that my parents, I was moving to Seattle uh, to live there for the next six years. And then my parents who lived in northern Minnesota uh, were moving away from the town or the house that I was living in for the first 18 years of my life. So and I, or I didn't have a chance to go back and visit it any, I mean, and I just left for Washington State. And I guess the most poignant image for me was the moment where you mark which home is yours out of all the lights in the town. And how it sounds, it's just a, it's just a flippant part of the text. It's just an offhanded remark by, by the poet. But to me, it meant it meant home, and that I'm cert I don't think I'd be experiencing my home home, the physic physical home. Certainly I go to my parents now for Christmas or something, but somehow not the same, it's not the same house. It's not, it doesn't have the same, I don't, I won't ever see the room that I grew up in again. And you know, there's a cheesiness factor to that, I understand, but there's also a very real, visceral feeling of home that um, that you get, and I, I think that's the primary image. I thought of this again earlier this spring when you're in a plane, and if you live close to an airport, I mean, that's one of the coolest things you can do, or that it's an automatic, I think it's automatic. You just look in the town to find your house from the airplane, and that's exactly what this poem sort of saying, why do we do that? Why do we think it's cool just to see where our house lies in the region? Because I think we love home and we need home and that it's special to us. So that, I think that's the image is that home is the critical image. Wonderful. Uh, go ahead, Kyle. Hi. Um, I was wondering, 
like in regards to like music, what your experience in high school was with that? Um, at school, I tried to do as much as humanly possible, and I got real burnout. I played the piano maybe 45 minutes a day because, well, my parents forced me to practice. <laughs> I didn't want to, but my parents forced me to. I maybe some of your parents do too. Um, but I played the piano all the time. Um, I was in the choir, band, and musical theater, and I did three sports, and I did everything possible. And I really got burnt out on music. And I also didn't, um, I played the oboe for seven years. <laughs> that was my instrument in band. Um, but I got to not be a geek, too much of a geek, because you can't march with an oboe. So then I went from the geekiest instrument of all to the coolest instrument of all, which is the uh, the tritons or quad tons, and you're thought it's like a hero. <laughs> if we play them, they're actually not that hard to play, but you just thought it was the coolest dude ever. Hey, no, I played I, those in high school. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. And in Pepe, this is the coolest thing ever. Then when you, you wipe up, which is the Masonga, you, you, the crowd goes, that's crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I did in high school. Um, uh, interesting, I did not write a single note in high school. I didn't start composing until I was 21. And I didn't even ponder it, I didn't think about it. So, um, I guess the, the moral of the story there is, um, because of my involvement in high school music in particular, I developed a sort of innate love of it, even though I didn't end up going to college to get a music degree. I changed once I went to college, but I think there was just an innate love stored up because of my work in high school. And I, the second moral of the story is that when you go to college, anything will and can happen. You do, I mean, I did not think I would be doing this. I wanted to be either um, an archaeologist or a graphic design, some, and so this is not what <laughs> I'd be doing, but here we are. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, I was wondering what the initial inspiration for this song was. Like, I know you got, uh, you got the lyrics from the poem, but like, what made you decide to use that poem for a song? Um, this, uh, I'm not sure if there's an answer that will satisfy anybody for this beyond just simple, simple inspiration saying this is the right choice for this scenario. I, it's just, it's that easy and it sounds like a cop out, but when you, it, it just, it just, you, when you read poem after poem and then you come upon one and say, this is, this is right, this is good. Um, and for me, I don't really hear music in my head when I write. It's very different. I don't think we really have time to talk about what that's like, but um, I rely a lot on gut and a lot on um, inspiration. So I trust it almost implicitly when that, that feeling happens that this is right. And then I just go for it, and it, it hopefully happens. So that's, you know, it's sort of a cop out, but it's the real answer. Okay. We've got like just a couple minutes left before the bell rings, so we'll do maybe yeah. one or two questions. Go ahead, Jeremy. 